Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to today's first look at Starwind Software version 5.0. A couple of highlights for uh, this version of the software. Uh, Starwind is very excited to be announcing uh, our high availability solution. Uh, for those of you familiar with Starwind iSCSI software, uh, you're very familiar with our current ability to go ahead and mirror data between target servers, giving you a warm copy of your data, but requiring you to do a manual failover in the event that something happens to your primary box. What Starwind has done is now gone ahead and developed the high availability solution, which will allow you to go ahead and, and cluster these boxes in an active-active configuration, allowing for automated failover. If one uh, a problem should happen to a single box, it will automatically fail over to its partner. Uh, and then ultimately, when you bring that primary back up, give you the option of failing back to that partner. So, uh, with that said, uh, I want to go ahead and uh, do a very brief introduction to version 5.0. Uh, as many of you can see here on the screen, we've got a brand new user interface. This has been designed, uh, redesigned, I should say, from the top down, uh, and ultimately uh, making it easier for you to manage multiple targets from a single pane of glass. Um, what I really want to get down to is uh, the HA capabilities. And as you can see here, I've gone ahead and pre-set up uh, an HA or highly available storage device. In this case here, uh, I'm utilizing uh, the 192.168.1.151 as my primary server. And my partner server is 192.168.1.80. Now, essentially what I'm doing here is I've got a test ESX LUN set up along with its partner. Um, as you can see, both of these are currently synchronized. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we're in a situation where um, we're ready to, to go ahead and start the process of sharing this storage out uh, to my ESX hosts. Uh, now, what I'm going to do during this brief demo is uh, go ahead and show you this setup in ESX, show you a VM that's running on this storage, fail one of these boxes, and then ultimately uh, show you that the storage uh, indeed stays available, the VM indeed does stay running. So with that said, let's bounce over to my virtual center. Uh, as you can see here, I've created a data store called HA Test Store, uh, and uh, if I go ahead and right click and look at the properties here, uh, we can go ahead and manage paths and we can see that we've got multiple paths to this storage. Uh, in this case here you can see my .80 box um, and I've got two NICs in uh, my 151. So there's the 151 and I've got a second NIC in that box that's 153. So as you can see here I've got uh, a true sort of active active type of scenario going here with multiple pa active paths to the storage. Uh, and ultimately, uh, this is going to allow me to go ahead and make sure that in the event that something happens to Starwind Box A, uh, Starwind Box B will pick up the load, uh, will continue to service the load, and ultimately will ensure that I receive uninterrupted storage service to my ESX environment. Now, what I've also done, uh, just so you can see, uh, I have created a VM on here, and let me just go ahead and browse the data store. Uh, so there's a, the VM that I've created on here, uh, and I've actually got that VM running, uh, and uh, as you can see here, it's uh, just a basic Windows Server 2003 um, uh, box, so nothing special about this at all. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and log into it. And as you can see, um, just a regular running virtual machine, nothing special about it at all. So now I've got, I've got that going. Um, now if you remember, uh, we go back here real quick, if you remember we had uh, 151 here is set up as one of the nodes in my storage cluster, the other is uh, the .80 box uh, where the partner exists. Uh, I'm on, actually on .149 here, I'm actually uh, just utilizing this as an interface. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is actually bring up the 151 box, as you can see here. Uh, here's the 151 box that I'm running. I'm running the Starwind service on it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just shut this down. So we're going to go ahead and do a shutdown. Uh, we'll just do... Yes. 
and we're going to go ahead and bring that box down. So that box is now coming down. Uh, I have now just basically simulated the failure of one of my nodes, my storage nodes, uh, in this sort of HA type of scenario. Now, if we come back out here to the 149 box, you know, we're going to be able to see here, if we refresh this enough, that eventually uh, these will become out of sync. And ultimately, uh, what that means uh, is that you're going to go ahead and have one box down, one box running the storage. And that means that, uh, you know, we'll just have to synchronize these when they come back up. And as you'll see there, uh, you know, it's certainly something that uh, happens uh, without any, and there's connection loss to the 151 box. So that box is now officially down. Uh, and, you know, there's no longer any connectivity to that box at all. So now what I can do is I can come over here and come into my VM, and as you can see here, the VM is still running without a problem. Uh, everything is working as it's supposed to. Um, you know, there aren't any issues with the VM. It's, it's performing the way it's supposed to here without any real issues. Uh, let's go to free hotmail. And as you can see, I'm surfing the web on this uh, without any problems at all. So I've basically kicked out one of my storage nodes. And as you can see here, there's an automatic failover to the second storage node. So no problems at all. This, this uh, data store continues to be available. Uh, I continue to be able to browse the data store without a problem. Uh, and all without that 151 box being online. Uh, and as you can see here, it'll take a few minutes for it to catch up, but you know, see now that's no longer synchronized. However, this secondary box has taken over the storage, and I continue to be able to utilize this VM. So this is pretty exciting stuff. We're uh, here at Starwind are very excited about the upcoming release of this product. We're very excited about the level of service that we're going to be able to provide our customers now, no longer with just a warm copy of your data, but really true storage high availability. So we're eliminating that single point of failure for your ESX or your ESX resource clusters, your Microsoft Hyper-V clusters, uh, your Zen clusters. So very, very exciting stuff. We do have a lot of other features in version 5.0 that we're going to be rolling out and, and announcing over the course of the next couple of weeks. Wanted to get us kicked off with just a quick view of the version 5.0 high availability. Appreciate everyone's time this afternoon. Look for the next installment very soon. Uh, and also look for the announcement once we go GA. I appreciate the time, and we'll talk to everyone really soon.